plant fam welcome back to my channel if you are new here my name is Jacqueline this is a jungle part of it anyway and if you are not new here thank you for coming back and um, if you've seen a few videos now and you're not subscribed yet what are you doing you should do that you should subscribe to this channel um, it does really help me out so anyway today I wanted to talk to you about my how many do I have here ten top ten plants that I will not be buying in 2023 so some of these are specific plants and some of them are like a whole entire group of plants so I'm gonna take you through this list we've done this in a few different ways on my channel but as I was sitting here and reflecting on the new year and what I want to do not only with my plants with my channel everything yada yada my life <laughs> you know <laughs> I realized that there are quite a few plants that I just don't F with anymore, girl. <laughs> so I thought I would go through that list with you guys and explain why if you've seen my videos on like plants that I hate or my no buy list and all that stuff, you've probably heard me talk about a few of these. But <laughs> for those of you that are new, here's a list of plants that I don't like. Okay. <laughs> so the first one on my list shouldn't be surprising if you've been watching my plant shopping videos or if you've been watching my videos at all in the last few months I've been saying quite frequently that I just don't want to buy alocasias anymore and I don't even know if I want to keep a lot of the ones that I have I do love a few of them a handful of them I think I'll always try to keep even if they don't look good but I'm just not interested in getting new ones I did get one new one like a month or so ago and um yeah I'm pretty sure it's dying so there's that and like it's on me I get it there are some people that love alocasias because they love to water their plants I am not one of those people so I forget to water them and then they look like trash <laughs> and I don't like them anymore so I've decided that it's best for me to just not buy them because I tend to kill them so there's that. I, I won't be buying any allocations. And I still can't figure out the corm thing. I do all the things and I get it to look like it's about to sprout and then it just dies. It dies every single time and everybody makes it look so easy. I'm better at bringing an alocasia back to life from like a rhizome than I am a corm. So that's a little bit frustrating. I'm not going to lie. And, and, and for those of you who want to know, I just put them in water. <laughs> like if it's dying, I just take it out and I put it in water. And then it's fine so I've successfully grown many alocasias in just water because I forget to water them which you can't do if they live in water <laughs> okay sorry I adjusted the frame a little bit <laughs> number two on my list also shouldn't be surprising because I've mentioned my disdain for crawling philodendron many times on this channel it is why I don't love the gloriosum and other plants like that that decide they want to grow this way instead of this way so <laughs> not to say these plants aren't beautiful I do have my gloriosum still it still grows stupid and I don't love it but I have it and I just recently got a philodendron Dean McDowell which is also a crawler and we are just hoping that I can um keep this one happy and it'll probably be the only crawling philodendron that I have in my collection and I I literally only got it because it was gorgeous and it was only $20 it has two growth points in it right now so hopefully um at least one of them does well for me <laughs> so we shall see right so I this is just my personal preference it is nothing um like this is all my opinions obviously about plants which we're allowed to have by the way so please don't come at me in the comment section if I say that I don't like a plant that you like like it's okay for us to like different plants I don't love crawlers because I don't have space for them I don't have room for a long pot I just want my plants to either 
grow vertically or trail, which I guess is the same thing. I don't want my plants to grow horizontally, okay? I don't have anywhere to put them, so I will not be buying any crawling philodendrons this year or ever again. So, Okay, so number three on my list is probably going to trigger a lot of people and I don't care, um, and it's Cebu Blue Pothos, so Epipremnum, Panatum, Cebu Blue. Absolutely love this plant. It is gorgeous. I have two of them. I have one up a pole and I have one that I'm letting trail up here. Um, but I still don't want more. And if I could go back, I probably wouldn't have bought it at all. Um, sorry, you guys. I'm not like super sick anymore, but I still have this terrible like tickle in my throat and like a cough. So I have my seltzer here with me to sip on. Yeah, Cebu Blue. Don't love it. I love the leaves. I don't love the way that it grows. I'm trying so hard to get it up a pole and get some nice big fenestrated leaves out of it and I I just can't do it and it pisses me off. <laughs> so I will not be buying any more Cebu Blue ever unless it's like an already mature one on a pole. So and I don't have room for that. So I will not be buying any Cebu Blue Pothos this year and honestly i feel like you could put these two together but i put them separate because they are two completely different genre number four on my list is monstera siltipicana but it is for the same reason as the Cebu blue i loved 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 this plant i don't have it anymore because i've had nothing but issues growing it it won't go up a pole i had another one die from spider mites and i'm just like you know what <laughs> I'm not buying another one. Like, I'm just not doing it. If you guys have been here for a long time, then you would remember the first time I found a huge basket of Monstera Siltipicana at, like, a Home Depot. And I had that thing for a long time. The thrips really just, like, were not kind to her last year. And then I had another one here that got spider mites. And I'm just like, <laughs> I can't do it anymore. And I have the same issues with growing it. Like I said, like I tried to get it up a pole so many times and it just still kept throwing runners that wouldn't attach to the pole. They wouldn't, the leaves wouldn't get any bigger. Like it was just a very frustrating plant to grow. And I do not see myself ever buying one again. When I see Cebu Blue and Monstera Siltipicana, in the nurseries now I just like I just don't have any desire I don't have any desire to buy them so I will say the same thing with the Cebu though if I were to find a mature specimen already growing up a pole I would buy it but I don't have room for it so that is not gonna be happening anytime soon so it's safe to say that I will not be buying any Monstera Siltipicana this year or for the foreseeable future Okay, so number five on my list is a little bit more in general, and that is cacti. And it is not to say that I don't love cacti and that I don't want more cacti, but I have too many. <laughs> like, I have a lot of cacti, you guys. Like, it's a whole entire shelf um, and lots of other just, like, dispersed in between. There's a whole bunch, like, down here and behind me in areas that you can't actually really see in this frame, but... I have shown you my cacti shelf and I know I need to do like a full on cacti tour. I get overwhelmed when it's like a lot of plants to have to go through. Yeah, there's not much more to that. I just have too many and I, I don't need more. Um, I don't need more cacti. So there's that. Number six on my list is the Aglionema Pictum Tricolor. And that is because I've had this plant like three separate times and I've killed it every single time. And it's just always been nothing but a disappointment. So why would I want to disappoint myself again? Oh my gosh, fam. Sorry. I needed to, I just like had a coughing fit and I had to blow my nose. So where were we? Aglionema Victim Tricolor. I've had this plant um, multiple times, like I said, and I've killed it. And I don't know anybody who has kept this plant happy for an extended period of time. So it's just a really frustrating plant and uh, I've got cat hair on my lip. What else is new? And uh, yeah, I just, I don't want to disappoint myself with it again because it's gorgeous and it was one of my top wishlist plants when I first started collecting plants and 
I would love to have one, but it's just not realistic. Um, there are other plants that have similar variegation and it's just not worth the headache. So number seven on my list is going to be funny because there's one right here and that is begonia, but it's not because I don't love begonias. It's just purely that I don't want more. I have some that are really happy and stunning. This one is in a ooh, disgusting self-watering pot that needs to be cleaned out. And um, otherwise it would probably be dead. But I love a good begonia. My cat made a snack out of this one. He was fine. He just had a yucky belly from it. So I had to move it up here where he can't reach it. I didn't think he could reach it down here where it was before, but apparently he, he likes to climb up on the shelves now. <laughs> He's getting very comfortable in his new home. So, um, yeah, I just don't need more begonias, especially Rex begonias. You guys know I just don't do well with those. I prefer the um, cane begonias, uh, but I just, I don't want more of them. They're really high maintenance and they grow kind of wonky and stupid and they need to be cut all the time and it's just like not it's not for me it's just not it's just not that life i used to have so many and i loved them i went through like my little cane begonia phase and i don't regret it they were gorgeous i just um couldn't keep them all happy so i still have a few i still have my really big one um but I don't want more. Number eight on the list is another genus, and that is a Peperomia. So listen, there's always going to be exceptions. There are a few Peperomia that I have in my collection that I absolutely love, but overall just do not do well with Peperomia. So I steer clear of them. Like if you've seen my plant shopping videos, you already know <laughs> that I do not mess with Peperomia. So I do have like a couple of cute little, this one probably needs to be watered, um, little babies. Like this is one of my favorite little, uh, this, uh, what is this one called? Well, it's not the watermelon Peperomia. That one I kill. Um, but it looks like the watermelon Deschidia. So I'm, I'm a big fan of this one. Uh, I just don't remember the name of it off the top of my head. But I rooted it myself in water and I just recently potted it in here. So hopefully I can keep it happy because <laughs> it's cute. Otherwise, the only Peperomia we have is the Incana, which is the one with the fuzzy leaves. I absolutely love that one. And we have one um, Obtusifolia that's still alive that was a cutting from his mom's plant. So, like, we can keep a few Peperomia happy, but otherwise... And it's funny because when David first started collecting plants, he was a really big fan of Peperomia. That was like his genus that he fell in love with. And I didn't want to ruin it for him. He bought so many Peperomias and they did really well where he was living before because he had the right conditions for it. But I think that eventually they got the best of him. And, uh, yeah, he's just, he's no longer a Peperomia fan. I just didn't want to ruin it. He was having so much fun collecting them, and it was really cute seeing him get excited about plants. Um, that excitement has definitely, like, died down because we have so many of them now, and he's just like, yeah, they're cute, but, like, he doesn't get super excited about a plant often anymore unless it's, like, something really weird, so there is that but it was nice it was nice while it lasted <laughs> okay so number nine is another generalization here and it's just like string of plants like string of things like for certain never gonna do string of turtles again I have no reason to be buying a string of bananas or like a string of pearls or anything like that I have all of the string of hearts already that I could possibly want so there's no need for me to be buying more of those and essentially I just don't see myself in the future buying string of anything so there's that if I did it would probably be a string of pearls if it was like a huge gorgeous hanging basket or something because I do like those but I don't have the room for it so 
and it's just like not it's not at the top of my list of things that I want or need so I just don't see myself buying any uh string of things in 2023 don't hold me to it though you guys I might completely mess up this whole entire list and like by March be buying a bunch of peperomias. I wouldn't do that. Okay, so number 10 on my list are another, it's another generalization and it's shingling plants because uh, they're annoying to grow and I just don't like them anymore. So the only one that I still have is my Monstera Dubia, and I think I'm just going to like chop it up and sell it, to be honest with you. Maybe keep a little piece for myself to see if I can like fall in love with it again, but it's gorgeous. It's just a real pain to grow when you have a small space inside. I don't have a bunch of room for a bunch of planks and stuff, so I'm just not, I don't love them. I think they can be really irritating to propagate as well because they don't always come out with like mature leaves and then you get these long stupid runners that don't attach and they just I just don't love it I don't love the look of it um I would love to one day be able to have like some syndapsis because these are shingling plants uh you just don't they don't need to shingle to look good so like that's this is an exception <laughs> to this uh one on the list here but I would love to have these attached to like the wall one day when we have like when we own a place and we're not renting because we can't really do that here so um it's not to say that I don't like shingling plants I just am not feeling them right now and I don't see myself buying any more while I'm living in this space so there are a lot of really beautiful shingling syndapsis varieties, and I have the Raphidophora hayi, but we're going to be getting rid of that one. So I just, like, um, I'm just over it. No shingling plants for me this year. And uh, that concludes my list of top 10 plants that I will just not be buying. And um, there's probably some that I'm leaving off of here but those were the ones that I could really think of that I have absolutely zero desire to buy. I don't really have the desire to buy very much of anything right now except for a handful of like wish list plants, but it is what it is. We need to we need to downsize, <laughs> you guys. We don't need to be adding more. So, if you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you are not already. It definitely helps out my channel. It helps out the algorithm, all of that good stuff. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos from me. There's a join button down there if you want to be part of the official plant fam get some extra content some perky perks come hang out with me in the group chat on instagram as well as the rest of the amazing plant fam members seriously such a great group of women and i highly recommend you get to know them because they're awesome and uh it helps support my channel so there is that if not there is a super thanks button if you guys want to super thanks me everything helps I cannot do this without you guys. I appreciate you so, so very much. And let me know in the comments below what plants you will absolutely not be buying this year. I promise I won't hold you to it. <laughs> anyway, I love you fam and I hope I see you in the next one. Bye.